is uh, what is a data warehouse now the term is really uh, quite simple if we just break that term uh, data warehouse means data plus a warehouse so warehouse dot net uh, normally warehouse means a place where you can have or where, where you can store huge amount of data so that you can use it in use it in future now data means information or uh, any type of uh, knowledge or data or information regarding the data now data warehouse means a place where we can store huge amount of data and when it comes to data that means a sort of information now there are lots of requirement of uh, having a data warehouse now uh, if you go to any shop you can find an example of a warehouse if you go to any um, specific uh, mall or any specific uh, um, shop you can find they have a notebook or now the notebook is obsolete so they are having a system where they are entering the information in a file that uh, how much they have uh, purchased how much uh, they have brought into their uh, shop what are the products which are shown today all those informations now these informations are really required when you want to do some predictive analysis or when you want to do some uh, historical analysis now that's why right. data warehouse is very much essential nowadays and uh, if I, if i take a simple example of uh, data warehouse uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's consider uh, the uh, facebook one also now facebook is also having a data warehouse so where uh, where they will store all the activity of a particular user now uh uh can can you please uh, mute yourself okay thank you so data warehouse uh, yeah, facebook have all, its own data warehouse where it's where it store all the activity uh, you done by a specific uh, user so we will go through uh, the uh, data warehouse what uh, facebook is using and how it is using in the next slides so let's go into data warehouse so data warehouse is it's just only a database but it having a structure which is quite huge than a specific database database is meant for small amount of uh, customers it's meant for uh, uh, very for a specific uh, if if you are running a shop then you need a specific uh, database to handle all your information but if you are uh, handling a company or you are having um, millions of records to be handled on a daily basis then you need a data warehouse because uh, the processing of those huge data cannot be possible in a database so that's why we are having a uh, data warehouse now let's go into the definition of uh, data warehouse then now data warehouse is a database which is obviously uh, it's a huge in size along with that it having the few it have it have few properties one is it's subject oriented data warehouse is uh, integrated it's a uh, time variant and it's non volatile now we will go through each of its characteristic or each of it uh, each of the property of data warehouse now first thing is subject oriented now why the data warehouse is called subject oriented now in the picture you you will be able to see that uh, i'm having a sheet which contains sales channel quantity sold part number date customer name and all those attributes 
And this is a, a simple transactional file. Now, subject oriented means when you are classifying those information based on some specific taglines. Now, the first three items, first four items, in fact, sales channel, quantity sold, part number, and date. Now, all those attributes specify to a specific cell. So if I tag it to cell, then it will be easy to identify those particular attributes. Now, customer name and its mailing address. These are the two attributes which is specific for a customer. Now, it cannot be linked to a cell. It cannot be linked to a cell directly. But uh, if I if someone asks that uh, what is this attribute, then definitely the answer will be it's an attribute of a particular customer. Similarly, the unit price, the part number, product description, all those informations are attributes. All those informations are attributes of a specific product. Now, this is what subject oriented. In data warehouse, we will be having the transactional data, but it will be tagged to a specific subject area. It may be a cell, it may be a customer, it may be a product. So data in data warehouse, data are stored on the basis of data are stored on the basis of some specific subject area. They're not stored in a flat, uh, not stored in this transactional file. Rather, they will be stored on basis of the specific subject area so that it will be easy uh, for someone to identify what are the data specific to sale, what are the data that is specific to customer and all those stuff. Now, the next property of data warehouse is it is integrated. Now, why it is called uh, integrated? Suppose you are having a data warehouse which uh, gets data from three different uh, sources. Now, you have a, a database where you store the information in a, sorry, you have a database where you store your uh, cell information. Now, you have a flat file uh, inventory where you store the information in a CSV file and you have a mainframe system. Now you have three different systems from where you are sourcing the data for the data warehouse. Now, if I take a specific attribute, suppose say product or product ID to be very specific. Now, the product ID may be stored as a string in a flat file but it may not be stored uh, uh, stored as a string in the database. Let the product ID be an integer in a specific database. And it is having a different data type when it comes to mainframe. But when it comes to data warehouse, all those three different data types will be converted into a standard data type. So when, when you go to data warehouse, you may not find product ID with character as well as integer as well as, as uh, data type stored in mainframe. You will be having a standard structure here. You'll be having a standard data type. So that's why it is called integrated. So data warehouse will integrate the three uh, diff various uh, product or various attributes and store them into a standard format so that it is easy to run the query and easy to access the data. So that's why it is called uh, integrated. Now, non-volatile. Now, why it is called uh, non-volatile? When we have a database, uh, when we have a transactional system there, the records are getting inserted or updated on a regular basis. Now, if you have a, um, if you have a specific uh, product, 
uh, then that uh, if you have a specific product and the product price changes then you will update that particular uh, uh, or delete that particular record from your transactional system but in when it comes to data warehouse the records will never get deleted once the data warehouse come once the data come into data warehouse the status may change but it will be kept in the data warehouse there is no process of uh, deleting the data in data warehouse there may be a flag or uh, uh, maybe some uh, attributes to identify that yes this is the data which is present recently and uh, this is the data which is deleted but it will uh, that means there will there will be a soft deletion uh, process there will be no hard deletion in data warehouse that's why it is called uh, non volatile <coughs> next is now what is time variant as we have discussed data warehouse store huge amount of data now in a transactional database you may be having a smaller or the most recent data but when you go into data warehouse you will see all the information all the history of a particular uh, record now why it is called time variant because it not only stores the recent data it may not be the most recent one but maybe the previous version of the record along with that the history of a specific uh, uh, history of uh, of for the data now why we need those history now if if if, if you are a, a manager of a specific uh, finance company then you want to know that um, what are the thing driving your company in a profitable direction now for an example uh, let's take a small example of us uh, uh, of a shopping mall or a shop now um, transactional data will store what are the product that are purchased uh, hi guys can you please uh, mute yourself So transactional database, suppose you are uh, running a shop, then what are the products sold for a particular day we are having in that? Uh, you are having those informations in a uh, transactional database. Now, if you want to know that uh, which product was sold the most in a specific month, then you may not find that in a transactional database as there is huge amount of transactions and uh, if you try to fetch that information from a transactional database then it may hamper uh, the database performance now uh, guys I, I would request uh, to please uh, mute yourself i'm hearing some sound in the background Okay, so uh, so in data warehouse, uh, yes, so if you want to know that which particular product is uh, sold the most or which particular product is not uh, having that much uh, um, favorite uh, in, in in terms of uh, its purchase then you want to go to you definitely have to go to the data warehouse to check uh, its uh, purchase history now we can't query those information in a transactional database because transactional database is used for your daily transaction now just imagine if you are uh, trying to fetch that uh, 
to that information that how many product were sold in a specific month and at that time at that point of time you are uh, entering something in a transactional database it may impact your performance because uh, the database is busy in uh, providing the uh, result of that particular query which you have fired so that's why um, what we have uh, so what, that's why what uh, most industry uh, do is they move their uh, transactional database uh, into a separate one so that it will uh, so that it will not impact the query performance so this is the difference between uh, a transactional database and a data warehouse i think this uh, clarifies uh, why it is called a time period let's go to the next slide now what is a data mart now in the first slide when we are discussing subject area the sales customer product all those stuff now that is basically an example of uh, data mart now what data mart does is it will convert the data inside the data warehouse into a specific subject area now for an example suppose you are working in a company where uh, you are having three team which uh, do the analysis or do the reporting now you have a marketing team you have a customer team or customer management team and a sales team now the data in data warehouse is very huge but the data which uh, the sales data maybe uh, it may not be required by the marketing team and the data which is specific to marketing may not be required by the customer demographic team so that's why concept of data mart come now what data mart is it convert the whole data warehouse into some chunk of the information which is specific for a specific user now if you see we are having the data mart inside the data warehouse now it can be outside the data warehouse so that it can be used by a specific user now the marketing team will uh, it's not required for them to go into data warehouse and filter those marketing data they can own directly go to the marketing data mart and uh, use the query there so that they will get the required information similarly the sales team they can only go to the sales mart and uh, use their query to get the required information similarly for the customer uh, management team now that's why uh, it's uh, when you have uh, this scenario that you are having different team to handle in a specific company then it's better to build data smaller data marts rather than a huge data warehouse okay so when we are doing uh, when we are uh, discussing about uh, the characteristic of data warehouse we come to know that data warehouse is uh, time variant now this comes to the concept of uh, oltp and olap now what is oltp and uh, what is olap and why we need it now oltp means online transactional processing now oltp is a place where large number of transactions happen that is uh, there may be a insert may be a update may be a delete now this is an example of a, a shop when you are running a specific shop then you may be having a oltp system so what oltp does is it it should have a fast query processing i mean uh, when you are having a transactional database you obviously want when you query it 
you will get the result instantly. For an example, suppose when you are uh, going to the ATM machine and uh, giving your card details and your PIN number for a, a statement, it uh, reflects in a specific uh, monitor or it gives us sleep. Now, if it is not uh, uh, if it is not uh, that fast, then after entering those information, you need to wait for uh, wait for some time in order to get those information. Now, that may be a bit uh, difficult if you are not getting the response uh, quickly. So you need to have a OLTP system which is fast. Now, if you try to um, get a report or get a specific information from a database, then it impacts the transactional data or the transactional processing. Now, if you are querying a huge, uh, if you are running a huge query in a transactional database, it may hamper the day-to-day -day, uh, processing of day-to-day -day, uh, activity of a specific uh, transactional uh, transactional database. Now, here, the effectiveness of uh, OLTP system is measured by the number of transactions per second. Now, you obviously want the system to run faster. When you fire a query, it should give you the, the result instantly. So that's why um, OLTP systems are uh, for uh, only uh, the front uh, system. That, that means when you are running a shop, when you are running a specific uh, UI, all those information, in you need a OLTP system. Now, OLTP system follows third normal. Uh, if you want, we can have a, uh, when we are discussing about the, uh, in, in the next class, we can go through what is a third NF. Uh, we will discuss what is normalization also. Now, what is, uh, next is what is OLAP? OLAP means online analytical processing. Now, this is basically for those who are involved in some sort of reporting, some sort of analysis. Now, data warehouse is only meant for online analytical processing. Now, if you want to know that uh, how many products are sold for a specific region or uh, how many products are purchased by a specific customer, then you can't go, for, go and check that in a OLTP system, but uh, all those informations are stored in a OLAP system. Now, the queries that are used for an OLAP system is quite complex. Now, uh, you want to know that uh, what is the revenue percentage, how, how the revenues are getting uh, increased, how are they are getting decreased, and all those informations. Now, this in, for this particular information, you need a OLAP system. Now, OLAP applications are widely used by data mining techniques. Now, the question is, what is data mining? Data mining means um, finding a specific pattern from a set of data. Now, if uh, for an example, if someone sees your uh, credit card bill and uh, if you find that uh, on a monthly basis you are having uh, transaction from different restaurant, then he can assume that this particular person is uh, likes to eat outside or eat uh, in the restaurant. Now, finding those types of pattern from a specific set of data is called data mining. Now, there is a fun example for our data mining process. Um, in a, in a US-based company, uh, which run, runs a specific uh, shop,
uh, they have done is um, they have done some analysis. So what they have uh, done, they have collected all the transaction history, all the sell, all the purchase that is happened for a specific month in the specific uh, shop. And uh, from that data, they, they have found a very funny pattern. I think everybody is aware of that example. Um, they found that uh, those person who are uh, purchasing a diaper on Thursday, they are purchasing a beer with that. So they, it's, this found fun, uh, sounds funny, but yeah, that's true. And uh, after that, uh, what they've done is they have just placed the both both the sections adjacent to each other. So they, they have placed the beer uh, section inside of the, uh, besides the uh, type of section. You can't imagine after doing that, they have got a revenue that is five times their normal revenue. So they haven't done anything big. They just collected the information, find the pattern and implement the process. So that is called data mining process. Now, uh, this this OLAP or online analytical processing or analytical processing will not only help you to find out what happened in the field, what happened in the history in the past, but also helps you take some decision for the future. That's a whole app. Next is what are the architectures that we normally follow in a data warehouse? Now, there are commonly three types of architecture that we follow in a data warehouse. One is the basic one, next one is data warehouse with a staging area. Now we will know, we will discuss what is a staging area. Next is data warehouse with staging area and a data mart. Let's go to the first one, um, the basic one. So here you can see you we are having three different sources, three different operational systems. From these systems, we are loading the data into a data warehouse. And uh, from the data warehouse, we are having three different types of users, set of user which are doing the analysis, set of user which are doing the reporting, and set of user which are doing the data mining. So this is the basic uh, structure of a data warehouse. Now, next is data warehouse with a staging area. Now, if you see, this structure is exactly similar to the previous one, but only having a staging area. Now, the question is, why we need a staging area? Uh, what is the requirement of a staging area? Now, suppose uh, you are running a company which brings data from three different regions. Now, let all the three info, all the three data are not available at the same time. Now, data from uh, first operational system is available at uh, 9 a.m. The data from the second operational system is available at, uh, suppose, 11 a.m and the flat file information is available at suppose one a. Now, if the three source data are available at three different times, the three system of data are available at three different times, then it will be difficult for you to process those data into data warehouse. 
so what it does is um, in that particular staging area uh, it will help us to stage the data that means if the first system is available at 9 a.m if second is available at 10 a.m and third is available at 11 a.m then what the staging area does is it will bring the data from the three different source system into this common location into the staging area so after that when data from all the three systems are available then it will start the processing into the data warehouse now this will help us to get uh, our data warehouse processing bit easier now imagine if you are getting the data uh, first data at 9 am then you need to process the data first after that again you need to process the data uh, which is available at 10 am and so on and it will be very difficult uh, when you are uh, and after that you need to join the data to show that all those information which are uh, processed at different times are uh, needs to be stored in a single table it will be very difficult to do that so that's why we need a staging area so after that the process is uh, it's similar we are having the analysis team we are having the reporting team we have the mining team to process this information now next is staging uh, next is uh, architectures with a staging area as well as a data mart now what is uh, when we know what is a data mart right so here you can see that uh, the data is there in the source system it is processed into the staging area and uh, then to the data warehouse and from the data warehouse the data are split into three different data mart now here you can see there is a purchasing data mart there is a sell data mart and a inventory data mart so here in that particular example if someone is uh, someone wants to get the information for uh, purchasing then he just need to go to the purchase data mart he it's not required for him to go to the uh, sell data mart or the inventory one so similarly if someone is interested in sell data he just needs to uh, go to the sell mart so this is uh, the third type of architecture next is uh, the schemas in uh, data warehouse now what are the different uh, schema that are followed in a data warehouse now what a schema means now schema is just a blueprint of a specific data warehouse now if you are building a specific construction or you are building a specific structure you need a you need a blueprint or a specific when we say that schema is just a blueprint of a specific uh, data warehouse now in uh, in current uh, current data warehouse structure we are having uh, three types of uh, schema that are normally followed one is the star schema next one is the snowflake schema and the third one is the fact constellation schema we will go through each of those uh, schema uh, with examples of uh, uh, what are the terms that are uh, being used in a specific uh, uh, that are used in a specific uh, specific schema or a specific warehouse what is a fact table what is a 
dimension table and uh, what is the different uh, fact tables that is currently used in a data warehouse what is the different dimensions that are being used in a specific uh, uh, specific uh, warehouse uh, all those information along with that we will come to know what is a, a, a um, slowly changing dimension what is a type one uh, dimension and all those information and after that we will jump back jump into the the practical one so that uh, we can do some uh, do some stuff in the in our informatica structure so uh, with this i end the first session of uh, uh, informatica um, if anybody have any questions just uh, you can 